Hello and welcome to At the Canal at the uh, Unbanked Life. My name is uh, Precious Chikudi and I have my co host with me. Uh, my first co host is Agnes Joy Loco. And the second co host is Mark. It's good to have you guys back again. And we have a very, very important uh, discussion, and we'll be talking about rape of minors. Uh, this is something that's been happening, you know, since a long time ago, and we felt that uh, why don't why don't we just come and discuss it at the canal, uh, where we just air our views and also get your own views as well. And uh, you know, this is coming from a, a, a story that uh, we saw on uh, the on the weekend. So you can if you want to find out more on that story, you can also check uh, on our website at uh, www.vanguardnjr.com. And also, if you have the papers, it's also in the papers today. And uh, it's a story of uh, you know a, a minor, seventy-two-year-old uh, man, uh, you know who you know who took uh, canal knowledge of a seven-year-old girl. It's it's a very sad story, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why we decided to bring it here. And you know the story, as the story goes, is that uh, the man in himself. Uh, you know, there are reports that uh, the mother of the victim, you know, went out to, you know, buy something only to find out her daughter, you know, came to her and was, you know, very, very uncomfortable. And, you know, when they started to do all the probings and everything, they found out that the girl had been, you know, sexually, you know, um, abused by, you know, this man. And next thing was, you know, they took up the case to the police station and then... Uh, you know, they found out to when they took because the hospital that that was what happened, and you know all the same back and forth with the same story. But then the reason why we decided to talk about it is because this is not just a matter that is very new. This is something that has been there for a long time coming. We've had people talk about you know older men, you know maybe um, stepdad rapes. Mm -hmm. um, his stepdaughter, step or dad rapes his daughter, mm -hmm. or even um, neighbors. Yes, even neighbors, you know, or even mm -hmm. mom takes advantage of so her son, you know, all those kind of very gory things that we do not want to hear because uh, these are supposed to be people who these children are supposed to look out, look up to, look up to and say, yeah. oh, these are like a parent figure or mm -hmm. my parents that I'm hoping to become like in you know in life and that's why we're asking this question like why would any sane grown man you know stoop so low to you know to the extent of sleeping with a child do you think it's a form of insanity uh, I would like to ask you Agnes yeah to me I would say I would say it's a form to me it's a form of insanity you know some people we are just walking and everybody's covered with clothes. You never can tell what that person is is literally passing through. Some people can be if looking at them, they are really, really going through challenges like they are having disorder, disorderliness, but you never can tell. And that's why it's not advisable for you, even as a parent, to leave your children with your neighbors because you don't know what is running through their minds at that very moment they can be playing ah my neighbor ah yeah a fine girl all those kind of things but you never can tell what they are passing through at that very moment and you don't know what is running through their minds all right did you agree with her that it's a form of insanity you know people who do these things of course i i agree with her 100 percent because you know imagine an adult a full grown man you know, sexually attracted to, let me say, three year with some people even do it with a one month old baby. Yeah. Now, who in his right sense would actually do that? So actually, that person is mentally not all right. I feel that person is mentally not all right because a mentally ordered person would not, with with his right senses, you know, want to sexually, you know, abuse a one year or a three year or a five year old uh, a girl. When he or she, when he can actually walk up to an adult, a full grown woman, and then approach her, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, then yeah, you try the next person. Okay, now you spoke about um, you know, um, you think it's a mentally, it's a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. 
because you, you you hope that these men are people that should be able to walk up to you know full grown women to mm -hmm. ask them out mm -hmm. instead of you know you know passing all their loss to a younger child but then uh, do you think that these men is because they are sexually depraved what if the, these people are sexually depraved and they feel like well because it is a child you might not need to go through all that stress you know you know with a woman you have to talk to her and say um, I like you go through all that journey before you eventually want to if she agrees but do you think that these people, because of they are so sexually depraved, mm -hmm. they see these students, oh, these ones don't have to ask me any question, mm -hmm. or I don't need to go through all that stress, you know, and that's the reason why they do these things to these children. There is no, uh, for me, there is nothing that I can use to justify such an evil act. Now, if they, like you said, they are they're actually, they, they, they are actually in need for it, they have other ways, I think, you know, I can't really say out that they can actually use and then, Take your mind off it, number one, and if it is to go off, then look for other alternatives rather than, you know, abusing a child. Yeah. So um, let me ask you, um, Agnes, would you say that, um, you know, most of these people who like perpetrate this act are mm -hmm. like people who lack education? Because a lot of times when these stories come out, most of these stories are always like, you know, they even happen a lot to people who find themselves living in, you know, tenement houses that's like the what we call face when face your house you know most of the stories i'm not saying all of them yeah. you know some of them happen to people who are even living in better houses too yeah. or also you know what they can afford those type of houses and everything mm -hmm. but you know we hear these stories happen more in you know my neighbor to my neighbor type of house mm -hmm. where i can say ah um papa chukwemi can help me look after my child i'm coming to get i want to get the man to down the road mm -hmm. or mommy kinsley please help me look after my son i want to go get something do you understand the point? Like, yeah. will you say that, you know, it has anything to do with the level of education? Maybe these people are not so enlightened, and that's the reason why they do these things. Yeah. Yeah, to some extent, your level of education matters. And I believe that the, there's a saying that's, that goes that an, um, an idle man is the devil's workshop. You, you can be educated to some extent, but when you have nothing doing, it's, it creates some images in your mind. You want to, like... You know, when you are just idle at home, you are always at home. You don't have anything doing at the moment. You are not going anywhere. When you see children going up and down, that thought can easily come to your mind. And deviating from the insanity aspect, some people do it actually for ritual purposes. Yes, now that ritual purpose is what I was going to even come close to. Like, yeah. if a man who is quite older, yeah. do you understand, someone who is really at age maybe 70 or 80 like you should even be counting your scores in yes bed and say, yes oh, yes this is time for me to you know start mm -hmm. to the gather my family right. around yes. and then think of how i want to make mm -hmm. peace with my maker and everything like that if at that age you use you you're trying to do stuff like that for ritual like what exactly uh, um what exactly will you be using you know things like that for you know, um, gift. I want you to respond to you that. Know, um, she said Agnes said something about uh, maybe the level of edu maybe the level of education affects them, and then they tend to do what they do. But I I strongly disagree because for education, whether or not you edu whether or not you're educated, you know your left from your right. You know what is wrong and what is right. You, if your inner mind will even tell you when you start doing something wrong, ah, this thing I'm doing is wrong, and then you tend to do it. Now that's for a ritualism. For a parent to leave before you leave your child for um, your neighbor or your friend to take care of why you step out to buy something or why you go to the office you should know who this child who this uh, person is you able to know the, uh, this person is somebody i trust if i can leave my child with with um, him or her because this ritual thing is everywhere it happens everywhere sometimes sometimes yes they tend to you know um take kind of and the knowledge of those kids and then we take something from them to either you know increase their age sometimes to increase it might be to increase their age or maybe to make money you know it's it's something that happens it happens it happens so it's something that it happens i don't know when or who it will happen to next that's my question is that does someone of that age mm. really needs to be doing something like that to you know to increase because i mean uh, at that age you've seen literally almost everything in life 
Yes, there's nothing that is going to be new. So why would you really want to, you know, get involved in things like this just to increase your life? That's the quest of wealth. The more you have, the more you want to have. Yeah. The more you think you have, that's when. But they say the bigger the wealth, the higher the problems. The higher the so, so those people that are, that are actually very old, they don't want to die. They don't. If want they to. have their way. They will use everybody in this world just to refresh themselves. Yes. Mm, yeah. you're, you're, so you're taking sides here, like you're so sure about it. I'm very sure. It's not as if I'm taking sides, but that's the real thing. It's just that you, you might be looking at them that these people are aged, like mm, they, are, they should be counting their days on earth. But to you, my dear, they are not counting any age. Exactly. If they can live up to 200, yeah. 300 so when, 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 you, when you say that, I don't want you to sound like you're trying to generalize because most people are not no, no. like that. No. But because when you say most people, it's more like, it sounds like people within that age do not yeah. want to, you know, grow old. No, so no. I, <laughs> I mean those that abuse the the minor now, okay. not generally all those in that age rate. I mean those that abuse the minor. Because I see no reason why you are about 90, 85, 80 years and you are st- your, quel- uh, your quest for wealth is still increasing. You are supposed to leave those wealth for your children and your grandchildren. So to me, I think mm-hmm. some of them that, that are involved in such art, they are using it to stabilize their age. Like they want to renew it. They don't want to go yet. So I think that's what most of them Okay, you know, also, you know, I, I also saw that, uh, you know, um, one time too in South Africa, you know, um, some people would, you know, rape children so that they can use their blood, you know, that's like, the, they yeah, say they need the hymen mm-hmm. of a you know, virgin to cure HIV AIDS. You can imagine the level of, you know, barbarism that, yeah. you know, people think about when they do all of all these it things, even to the detriment of you know their their mm-hmm. child but th- you know still speaking do you think that we should you know be bothered with um, psychological evaluation for this type of people should it be something that we should think about that this person needs to be you know, evaluated psychologically um most, de- most definitely because those people are not okay should that be a justification for why they did what they did no there is no justification for it there is nothing there is no justification for such an act no. Okay. So still speaking on that, you know, uh let's let's look at um, you know, what the constitution is saying and that's the fact that you think that the Nigerian constitution has helped in the prohibition of uh, of the child marriage. Uh, uh Agnes, I would like to ask you on that one. To me, I don't I think they've not really done looking at the African children chattered which has set a, a certain age where adults would begin from the age of 18. But you, you, you look around these days and you see some, some um, parts of the country, they are, they are getting married at a very tender age from 12, 10, 11. And uh, the, the government, like the lawmakers, they are not really doing anything about it. So to me, I don't think they've been doing anything. So you think that um, this um, early child marriage also, you know, has an effect on well, uh, you know, you know, rape on minors? Yeah, yeah, it has a very high effect because when you get married to those people, they are not like they are not matured to some. They are not even matured to handle things. And when you see an an um, an age man of 70, 50, 60 getting married to such a girl at that age 13 12 she cannot the she cannot handle a lot of things and that's why it's advised that you should get married at the age you know that i know there is no age guaranteed like there's no age set for you to get married but to some extent you should have that stability of mind as a lady to be able to accept things like to control things then you getting married to the to the girl because she's not a lady to the girl of 13 14 years her she cannot handle anything so in that process that's rape because she's not up to that age okay let's let's take a closer look at you know the medical implications of things like this i mean we've seen we see these stories every now and then and then i just remembered like sometimes in this year uh also a story like this of where a man a grown man of about um, you know of about uh, 74 years or so uh, had um you know raped a, a young child of 
a child of three months old and child had to go through like three so um yes. three steps of reconstructive um, surgeries so and uh, you know even till now the child is still in the hospital and all those kinds of things now a lot of times when you hear this this kind of stories you you know you, you start to wonder if that child will ever be okay again if you know this child will never have you know medical issues while growing up as a result of all these things and so speaking about you know the medical issues you know you know scientifically it takes about 21 years for one to grow into like a full ad adult you know in every sense of it and also so, you know sometimes some of these men they eventually because of you know how they come on you know young children and they are not so matured really because their body has not gotten to a certain level yeah. where they are really developed you know to to get to, to experience that level of intimacy yeah. you know and because of that you know it sort of affects them there's they, they are like wears and tears in their mm -hmm. vagina yeah. and also you know they you know it also affects their urinary tract just what i'm saying yeah. and you know you know what exactly do you think about this sort of medical implications that it has on you know women and also also on you know especially on children because mm -hmm. we're dealing with minors right now yeah. so what exactly do you think about the medical implications it has on the minors um gifts you know, when um imagine a child going through the force so sometimes this may end up using force yeah as an applying force why actually trying to you know gain the kind of knowledge of these children and at the end they tend to suffer um, they tend to suffer some medical um, um problems due to that you know like for instance let, let me go to uh, a girl of, uh, let me just a story of a girl of a, let me say 10 years or 9 years you know getting pregnant you know they end into a sofa fistula all those kind of pains and the whole thing and some of them tend to start smelling later you know those are things that these children go through they go through such um of pains they go through that such problems due to uh, this whole child abuse child abuse child abuse stuff and uh, I think the 1999 constitution, like you said, does not does not really, really, really uh, uh protect these children because you know it's I know I know the first um, section states that the federal government uh, should not um you know uh come into uh, Islamic and the uh, customary marriages like they are allowed to get married at, at any age provided provided the the parents are in agreement with the suitor that came for for the daughter's hand in marriage so. It's uh, the medical implication is is bad, you know the pains that torture. Like you said, that that baby of, of about three months had to go through three different uh, uh, surgery just to get better, and you know I would not even know if at the end of the day if she will get better. And also outside the whole surgical thing, this, let's talk about the psychological effects of this thing. You know how would the child? Because uh, there's a theory that states that the way a child behaves, an adult behaves, can be traced to his or her childhood. Do you understand? Yeah. So yeah. It still reminds me of when someone says that uh, your past can be traced, your future, future can be traced from his past, past, really. Yeah. Yes, so these things actually would actually really, really affect uh, these children. So I think the law should be unified in such a way that uh, it protects these children. All right, let's, let's look at... Um, you know the issue of parenting like you know we were saying that these days now i think that um, some parents are really very very you know, like open i don't want to say like they are so they are sort of very unconcerned for example uh people are being hastened to get married ah mm -hmm. your biological clock is ticking uh, look yeah. at you uh, look at the age you are you're not married when will you have kids and start to raise mm -hmm. your own children uh when will you you know have your own children so that they will grow you know you grow alongside with your children and they would you know they will be there for you when you are old but then nobody thinks about the fact that some people are not ready mm -hmm. some people are not ready psychologically mentally you know financially to have kids they just want they hope that your children will just get married and then have kids for example there are people who you see people that have done divorce just because they want to have kids mm -hmm. and they don't have the you know the right like they don't have what it takes to raise a child mm -hmm. we, we see them everywhere on the road you yeah. see some children and then that's one of the reasons why we have you know it, we have a lot of um, street children hawking yeah. and it's even at risk for most of them because mm -hmm. uh when you look at it some of these children 
you know, they send them to, you know, I, I remember at one time there used to be one child then, she was, she was not even up to 10, but then they would send this girl to, you know, she would hop plantain and then she would be walking on the road and, you know, people like that can be victims of rape yeah, yeah. because somebody will just come, fine girl, come here, I want to buy plantain yeah, and, that's it. you know, the child is drawn to, ah, this is a customer, yeah, she I need just to, wants to sell. yes, yeah. I need to carry this, my market to this customer to buy and, you know, we've seen, we've seen a lot of videos of these things or where they lure some of these children mm -hmm. into uncompleted buildings yes. sometimes even into their houses even into bushes you know and then take kind of knowledge of them and you know so you know my point exactly is that you know speaking about you know the that's parental issues some of these parents do not have the money they do not have the technical know-how or they don't have what it takes the resources to raise these children and they want to have kids and they want to have you know kids they want to bring these children into life they want them to be exposed like so you know you're not doing well you know you cannot fend for yourself you know you can't feed yourself let alone feed a, another extra mouth then you bring a child to this world and the child is not even grown up to an extent that you send the child you know to to go on i want you to speak more on that and um, that uh, agnes okay to me i think um getting married doesn't really mean you are just going there to have children please some people get married you are getting married for a companionship because you need somebody that will be there for you advising you and all that not just bringing children to the world unnecessarily and you don't have the time to cater for them you don't have the necess the necessities to cater for them and you end up making them victims of circumstances in the sense that you getting married now you are getting married you are not supposed to listen though i know you take advices from family friends yes good and fine but everybody have a way in which they want their own family to run you are not getting married because your friends are getting married everybody has their have their own reasons for getting married some Would people can be getting married for children's sake but you can be but getting should that married be the case because getting married for children's sake and not being able to take care of these children is where the problem is yeah yeah you get married and have kids but not really you know there are some people now okay you are you are trying to survive you've get and uh, you've gotten married you are now two you are feeding two you are bringing a child that one is not even mature it's not grown you are bringing another one you are bringing another one even if you are, want to have children at least you there are some age um gap you should give your kids to be able to feed them to be able to take care of them I think I think about these kids and um, depending for your kids, you know, not all parents um, actually have so much money to actually buy everything their kids or children want. But as a parent, you should just do two important things. Number one, try your possible best to provide that little you can provide, and then teach the child to be contented with it. Your child should be able to say, "Fine, this is what my can bring, so that they can bring," and then that's it. Because when you get married and you don't have kids. You will not be able to stay in the house. The mother-in-law, okay. the father-in-law, the sister-in-law, the whole problem. Now is speaking just, on, speaking yeah. on this area of um, you know being content, sometimes I think that you know we we live in a country where people are so open to uh, having more children and having and not having the resources to you know yeah. train this children. And that's the reason why most times now you you know I, I like to paint this scenario of people who live in the face my face house because okay. most Nigerians that's where they are staying yeah. Yeah. and a lot of things happen there, you know, because some person is either trying to take their frustration out of some other person or some other people feel like um that um this is how it works in this setting. Now for example uh when, when growing up in like a face my face house, you you realize that um, some of these parents, especially when if if it, if it's a maybe mom, let's let's put in scenario mm -hmm. of a mom, a father, and uh, maybe four children, and they can't even maybe fend for their child. There is one bachelor uncle who seems to always have you. Know, the thing with bachelors or this this type of men mm. in that kind of setting is that they really always have enough food in their house yeah 
they always have a lot of things because uh, they they're not feeding an extra mouth. Yes. And so sometimes maybe these people are the ones who are living comfortable. They are the ones that can afford to earn jet two four mm. seven when yes. there's no light. Yes. They are the ones that will always have maybe biscuits, sweets in their fridge. And then these children are like, ah, I want to go to Uncle okay. Kenny house. Okay. You know, yeah. they want to go there to go and watch cartoon. And you know, the, this child keeps coming coming, coming, you know, over to the, uh, mm. Kenny's house and keeps watching, you know, cartoon. watching cartoon. One day, um, Kenny might even get tempted to say, uh, you know, start to see the child in another life. Yes. And see the child as a, you know, as someone he wants to exploit. You know, that's why, speaking about this whole uh, parental thingy, uh, I think that parents should, you know, really have children in their limits. Yes. Like if you can raise one child, raise your child yes. well. Yeah. There's no need to have, um, you know, three to four or even more children because, you know, m most of the cases that we see, we see that in in one out of how many children in the family, one of them have actually been either been sexually abused yeah. or want, and some of them never even forgive their parents because they feel like their parents abandoned them yeah. when they should have been there for them. Yes. And as a parent, you think that you're doing so much you're doing more than enough for your child. Yeah. But then, you know, that little time when you when you think you're not there is when something bad happens. Okay, really. yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's why I, I want us to look at, you know, this um, parent angle. You know, we're speaking about discipline. Yeah. And another thing also is the fact that, you know, some of these people lure these children with some of the things that you know their parents will not give them. I was giving you guys an example of how, you know, I saw... So I, I, you know, growing up, you see some parents who who do not allow their um, children to maybe drink a full bottle of coke. Yeah. They will say, "Oh, I need 